we'll just wait a couple more minutes. You can take your time and be comfortable. Sit quietly and just be aware. So let's begin. First of all, I want to welcome everyone and say really thank you for taking the time and uh, explore your true nature, look within. And this is an invitation to really explore what's going on within yourself. I'm very grateful that uh, all of you are here, the ones who I've met and the ones who I haven't met. I look forward to meeting all of you. And um, just a short brief introduction. The um, topic I chose about how to approach thoughts and emotions we're going to cover. That's the main thing that we're going to go around. I'd like to um, hear what your challenges and what you'd like to achieve. Uh, so when you step out from this webinar, you're going to have something you can uh, practice or a uh, an awareness that you can put into use in your daily life for the next week until we get together the following week. So we're going to build a continuity with the intention for the next uh, year. So time and space would not be a limitation. And that we will break apart the structure of what's going on within us and how to work with thoughts and awareness and thoughts and emotions and how to sh shift the attention to the background of awareness, which is everyone's true nature. At the end, I will go over some um, quotes that I really like from a book that I'll read at the end. And for now, uh, let's uh, start uh, being still and sit in silence and I'll guide so you can recognize that which is aware, which is always aware, 
you're just being aware of being aware and uh, you can be with your eyes open be in a comfortable position relax enjoy and uh, you can focus put your attention on me as the image because anyway I'm just a conceptual image in your mind and um, recognize the presence within you and through the whole webinar I invite you to pay attention to the presence that is always here always aware always watching silently even if there are words even if there are questions and answers so let's begin just recognize your body sensation you can recognize the breath in your lower abdomen rising and falling so your attention is slowly drawing or withdrawing within Don't try to recognize that which is aware. Awareness is always aware. Just remain that which is already here, already aware, aware of the body sensations, the feelings, thoughts that arise and subside in that field of awareness. Just relax. Allow everything, anything that arises subsides within you, anything that appears disappears within you, you are that which is always aware, know that and be free. Feel the presence within you and all around you, touching the outer layer of your body.
Just relax into the knowing of who you are. Who you are, always know who you think you are. Who you think you are, never knows who you truly are. Just remain the knowing. Recognize the sweetness of the presence. Allow the attention to rest, rest within yourself. Let's begin. And um, I would uh, really love to get your feedback so we can work together and uh, see where are the challenges and uh, how we can go deeper, really have tools for daily life, working with the thoughts, working with the emotions, allowing them to come into the surface and free themselves. So the basic ground and premise is that there is a field of awareness and that field of awareness is our true nature. It is looking through our eyes, through the thought, through the eyes, at the circumstances of life. There is always awareness and that awareness is a sense of I am. And in that field of awareness, 
Thoughts appear and disappear. Thoughts appear and disappear. When there is identification with the thought, that means when there is a, an identity with the thought like it is real, then it generates a bodily sensation, sensation which we call a feeling. And I'd like to cover the negative feelings, anger, frustration, impatience, fear, judgment, criticism. I think that's enough. Everyone can recognize it when it appears in their daily life. And because we are creatures of habit, that means we accumulated a certain patterns of habit, habit of thought, habit of movement of body, habit of expression and talking, then what happens, the automatic habits run our lives if we are not aware and conscious of it. The moment we are aware and conscious of the habit, the, the habit is not anymore running our life. It means it can be watched and noticed and, being, and allow it to release itself. So to make it simple, when thought appear and there is identification with the thought, that means I believe the thoughts to be real, instantaneously it generates a bodily sensation which we call emotion and let's say I'm angry because I think uh, something should have should be done differently or I don't want it to be the way I want it the way it is sorry then it I'm frustrated or angry and the moment I'm angry because it is not my true nature, it generates an unpleasant sensation. And the moment there is unpleasant sensation, the habit automatically reacts to it in two ways or few ways. The way it reacts, it either resists it, either it uh, fights with it, tries to push it, and what happens, the moment we resist it, we don't want it, we magnify the emotion because the mind is start to react to negativity. So how do we work with such circumstance situation is that it's easy if I can work with the thoughts towards the emotions that I don't like. Yet, what I found, and many, many people that do this work found, that there are times you cannot even work with the thoughts because they are so reactive. So you cannot even direct the thought to focus on a particular thought of um, welcoming or examining or discriminating, which I'm going to cover more when people, if you don't understand what does it mean. Not right now. Please be patient. So slowly, I would do my best to uh, be able to articulate everything so it would be clear. And again, if I'm not clear, please write and make comments so I can actually choose and um, uh, I can relate to it. So thoughts appear in the field of awareness and the moment the thoughts appear in the field of awareness, once I believe the thoughts to be real, it generates an emotion and we're talking about unpleasant emotion. And that emotion is a form of a um, cleanse. The moment I resist it, basically what happens, I get attached to it because I make it grow, I, I sustain it, I push it into the surface. So the way will start from the place that I cannot work with my thoughts. I cannot do anything. Because who I truly am is awareness, what I can do is just notice, be aware. So I invite everyone just to look into the empty space 
and just be aware. Be interested in the sensation. Be interested in the feeling that is running through your body as a vibration. The moment you look at it and there is no resistance, you allow this energy, trapped energy, to release itself. If you can, stay with that for a moment and be curious about it. Find what you love about it. Then you make sure there's no resistance mentally to the emotion itself. So if there is an anger and you're aware of it, because you don't like it and it's supposed to be like that you're not supposed to like it then you just watch and then if you can direct your attention by giving it love and the way it can be it's like I send love to this sensation I send love to this emotion I love it I love it I allow it you enable for it to have all the space for it to be released. So the strongest tool that one has is attention. Once you check where is your attention and the attention can be on the objects of the world, circumstances, the attention can be on the bodily sensation, and the bodily sensation can be divided to sensation that is not due to a belief, which is not an emotion, like feeling the heat. Yeah? If my face now, if there's a dripping because it's quite hot here and we are sitting without a, a air conditioning. So that's a sensation. And that sensation is not due to an emotion. Yet, if I'm frustrated because I want it to be colder here and I'm impatient, that turns to be an emotion which is generated in the body as a sensation. And if I can fix the attention on the sensation without labeling it, just watching, I allow the energy of the sensation to flow through without resistance and release itself. I can also choose to let go of the negative belief that created this emotion. So I don't necessarily have to see the belief, I just choose to let go of the negative belief that created this unpleasant emotion and set myself free. When I tell this to myself, I basically taking an inner action. And when I take an inner action, there is no reaction and therefore there is no resistance. And that allows the energy to be free. I'll take for a moment a look at the questions. And uh, let's see if I can be of a help. So I won't talk blah, blah, too much Aryan more concrete. So Chris ask, hi Chris, I'm so happy that you're here. I haven't seen you for many years. And um, the question is, as the thoughts arise and attachments arise, does noticing break the chain and leave one open to seeing what is real and essential? Is discrimination a lifelong practice or does one achieve equanimity? That's a wonderful question. Let's open it. As the thoughts arise and attachment arises, so when thoughts arise and there, there is identification with the thought, it's instantaneously. So when there is identification that already arise, I'm in a story. I, there's a concept I believe already to be real, then it generates right away feeling, yes? Now, that's, I don't have a choice. 
it's already happened. The choice I have now is, am I going to be interested in it? Or I'm habitually going to resist it, not going to want it. Or I find what excites me about it, what I love about it, what is the opportunity about it. And as I tell myself, even I ask, what is it exciting that I feel so bad? And after the question, I just stay with the sensation. Once I stay with the sensation, instantaneously I allow, I allow the energy to free itself. So I go back to the question, as the thoughts arise and attachments arise, so identification happens simultaneously, I don't have a choice with that. Only once it arises, now I can choose how to relate to it, either just watching or finding what excites me about it, what's the gift about it, what's the opportunity about it, what is it that I love about it. And if I answer even, then the question and the answer is already an inner action which eliminate the resistance to the emotion that is trapped in the body. So let's break the chain of the identification instantaneously. And one of the things that all of us have to understand, anything that arises in the field of, the, of awareness, it arises to free itself. If I resist to it, I don't allow it. If I get, if I react to it, I don't allow it. And if that happens automatically, that's great too, because that enables me to now see what's the opportunity about it, what excites me about it, what, why it is so wonderful that I notice that reactivity. And it can be as if I see it, it sets me free. I can just remain watching it and allow it, allow it to be having all the space, embrace it because it's awareness, which is you that embraces it. And the one who resists it is this tiny idea that I don't like it, which the mechanism is we have basically in the bodily sensations, apparently pleasant sensations, unpleasant sensations and neutral. We live the neutral right now. When we have a pleasant sensation, everything is wonderful. Life is great. I am happy. I'm joyful. If I want more of it, that's a negative pattern of thinking because I already moved from the experience of the feeling or the sensation itself. And the moment there is unpleasant sensation, that's actually a gift because it shows us few things. First of all, that we are out of alignment from who we truly are. So it's an alarm clock. It reminds us, hey, wake up. You are in a dream. You are caught in a story. You identify with a belief, yes? And then, then you want to find what is exciting about it is that you you recognize it and the moment you recognize it it allows it to set itself free so i hope it answers the question although it's not fully complete because the continuity of it is does it break the chain and leave one one open to seeing what is real and essential I'll tell you what I see with this question. When what I see with this question is that there, there is a preference of I prefer not to experience this particular negative experience or this misidentification. Instead, just be interested. 
be interested regardless what is the experience. And the more you cultivate being interested regardless what is the experience, you are actually dropping the habit of preferring pleasant experience and um, avoiding unpleasant experience. Yeah, you are you are breaking loose from um, at, um, being attracted, attraction and aversion. So if you find only what attracts you about it, what you like about it, what you want about it, you won't have the, the agenda of like, is it going to break the, anything? Because it doesn't matter. You don't care. Because you love it. Not because it feels good. Because that's the opportunity for you to explore it, get familiar with that. And the, the more you get familiar with that, the more you're interested in it, the faster you allow this negative emotions to come into the surface like bubbles and free themselves. And is discrimination a lifelong practice or does one achieve equanimity? I think it's better to look at it as a lifelong practice. Means be excited how you can explore going deeper, how you can um, touch more profound layers within yourself without achieving any goal. I'm going to read a little bit later, so I hope I won't be boring for you guys, so you stay till the end, some pointers that are related to that. So if that doesn't answer completely your question, please ask another question and I see if I can uh, be of a help. I'd like to uh, see the next uh, question. Thank you. So Valsa, hi Valsa, uh, we haven't met and I'm very happy you, that you, you are here. And uh, why do thoughts even occur, occur in consciousness? That would be asking, why does the body digest food? Because it happens. Just like digestion happens, thoughts appear and disappear within the field of awareness, which is consciousness, pure consciousness. These questions, when I take it within, it leads me is there a problem with thoughts? That's the question I have to ask myself. And if I'm honest and sincere and I see that there is a problem with the thoughts, that means my approach to every thought is not the same. With an equal understanding means it doesn't matter what thoughts appear. If I identify with the thought, I love it. I find what excites me about it. If I find resistance or tension, I love it. Not that it feels good. I love it because I find where is the opportunity for me to see? How does it set me free? How can I pierce through it deeper? Yes? So, thoughts are not a problem. Actually, there is no problem. The problem is... I create one because I have a preference. I like a particular vibration, which is a high vibration, which is my nature. And I don't like a particular vibration, which is a low vibration, which is farther away from my nature. Yet this low vibration, which is negative sensation, negative emotion, is a gift for me to bring me back to myself. In a, if I start to focus on what I want, not what I want and what I don't want, just what I want, and I want to approach anything that happens in the field of awareness in the most inspiring way, in the most exciting way, then I change my approach 
to whatever arises within me, regardless, whether it's thoughts that are negative and uh, emotions that are negative. Thoughts that are negative, I don't like it, when it's going to end. I judge myself because I'm supposed to be more spiritual. And if I'm spiritual, I'm not supposed this this kind of thoughts, which is, is not true. It's a misconception. Awareness is always aware. It never has a relationship with any thought and emotion. It permeates the thought. It illuminates the thought and the emotion itself. So awareness, which is you, never have a problem. The problem is the preferences I have, the likes and dislikes. I like pleasure. I don't like pain. That's all. So if I can stay with, find what I like around the habit that I don't like, then I start to change the pattern of my mind of reacting to what I don't like. I hope it was helpful. Thank you. Samir. So I don't see a question. Maybe I'll uh, let you ask the question uh, verbally. Um, I'm so happy to know that you're here. I love you so much. You're very dear in my heart, always. And I haven't heard from you for a moment. So um, would you like to um, ask the question um, verbally? If, if yes, then I'd be more than happy. If not, I'll be happy too. I'm so happy because it's new for me to work in a format like that. I don't see the people. I don't get to sense the vibration because we are vibrational beings. So we interpreted vibration through the sense of sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. And every thought is a vibration. And I'd like to build a continuity. So you will guide me. What are your needs, desires? Where are your obstacles? So we can really dive within. We can work together in a collaboration. So I need your help. And uh, I hope I will be able to be of a help for real transformation in everyone's life. And uh, that you will be empowered to feel the inner power within you that is changeless, that is unshakable, that you'll have tools to work with the thoughts and emotions and to be able to um, face any circumstances in your life, which by the way, the circumstances never affect us. Circumstances is what life is happening. We never experience the circumstances of life. We only experience the awareness the thoughts that appear within awareness and the bodily sensation that is generated due to the thoughts themselves. So I don't know regarding, I, I'll move on. Um, Sergey, hi Sergey. So wonderful to know that you are here. Alon, can you please repeat one saying, who you know you are, you know, and who you think you are, you don't, don't know. Something like this. <laughs> Thank you. Awareness is the ultimate knower. It knows the thoughts. So that which knows the thoughts that appear knows always the thoughts and sensation because it's the ultimate seer, the knower of it all. And it, it knows everything 
and it knows itself. The thoughts cannot know that which already knows the thoughts themselves. So you are the knower. And when from the mind you try to know the knower is impossible. It's like another saying would be what you're looking for is where you're looking from. And this is recorded. So anybody who would want to uh, see it again, it will be aired and notified so it will be accessible to, to all of you. Michael. Hi, Michael. So glad you're here. I am, let me see what is the question. If one is to be interested regardless of what is the experience, what is the right action when one is engaged in a toxic situation or a relationship? That's, that's a wonderful question. Thank you. And uh, that leads me, it throws me into something that I incur, encourage people who come and practice and is to focus on what they want. And the more you clear about what you want, and what everybody wants is to always be happy, always feel good, always experience harmony, always experience expansion, always experience the presence of who, who they are, always experience clarity, always um, being, being aware. So when one engages in a toxic relationship, and he would he or she will start to notice how they feel if they feel bad then they have to ask the same what do i want around this feeling and what i want is to be interested the faster i'll be the more i'll be interested in the negative feeling the faster i would allow it to come into the surface and flush it out of my system and then i would check this relationship, is this what I want? Yes or no? And if the answer would be yes, then I need to go through more of whatever lessons I have to. And if the answer is no, I will check myself, what is it that I want? And if I focus on what I want, it will take me to be in alignment to, to the clarity within me. And what I want is to feel good. And what causes me to feel good is the presence of awareness and the thoughts that I'm having in my mind. So if I have thoughts on a higher vibration, positive thoughts, loving thoughts, then it makes me feel good. Then I realize that the relationship, the external relationship does not affect me. The circumstances does not affect me. The only thing that affects me is actually the thoughts. Even the feelings that are generated in the bodily sensation do not affect me. What affects me is my thoughts reacting to these feelings, which, which generates more feeling, like a balloon. It whoa, expands and grows. So if you start to focus on what you want, that builds intense desire to be free. Because what you want, I want, everybody want, deep, deep in their core of their being, is want to be free. Want to experience the aliveness of the presence of who, who they are. So that would be your guiding system, your compass, your GPS. That if you check yourself, what do you want and how does it make you feel? If it makes you feel good, that means you're in alignment. So um, that's what comes to me in terms of uh, this uh, question. Um, I hope I was uh, helpful. And uh, thank you for asking because it opens another, another um, 
dimension to look at different concepts. If we look at an idea or a concept from one point of view, it's a limited. So we want to learn to approach the, the point of view from one angle and from another angle, from all directions that we can, because it will show us that concept from different dimensions. It will enable us to expand our mind. It will uh, awaken the ability to reflect within us and really explore within so there's no stagnation in the inner journey, in the exploration, in the investigation. Ramona, thank you Ramona for coming, joining us. And, um, ah, sorry, there was a miss, a, a, the person who assists me with the questions. Um, a, presented that I got confused, so. Craig. Uh, hi, Craig. I'm so happy that you're here. I haven't seen you for years. And um, let's, let's see what is the question. If I can rest in the beauty, thought resolves themselves. That's true. So if you can rest, just remain. The question is if when there is a cleanse coming into the surface and we never choose, and if you're being challenged, uh, if something happens that you still uh, give meaning or um, it's valuable, like it, the, the things that we, we are faced is around the body and around uh, relating to thoughts and sensations or other people and money, finance, which is body too. So it can be food, can be sleep, it can be, so that's the, again, when we face it and things come up into the surface, the main thing is how do we find a way that is the least resistant within me. So there's no resistance because when there's no resistance, there is no attachment to the reactivity, to the negativity, to the low vibration. If I am captured by the thought, I sink deeply into the feeling, almost always this brings me to joy. If I am captured by the thought, if it's a thought that is a high vibration, it's, it gives you joy, Yet still the vision is, the, the whole attention is still narrowed to an image, to a thought, to a frequency. So you can be captured to the, with the thought like, um, I am infinite beauty. Yeah, just, just what came for me. Don't get uh, hang up on, the, on that idea. I'm infinite beauty and I think it, I am an infinite beauty radiating through me. And if I just leaving that thought to merge into that space, the boundless space of awareness, I use that as a bridge, as a vehicle. So there is boundless awareness. There's no one better than another because if you feel joy, great, be joyful. So thank you for asking. Thank you for sharing. The next question is Abraham. Uh, hi, thank you for coming. I, fre I frequently feel bad, trapped and impatient. I resist something, but I do not know what it is that I resist, what can be done. That's a wonderful question. So 
when you frequently feel bad, it's an opportunity. It's a gift for you because it keeps you alert. It keeps you awake. It forces you to do the exploration, the investigation, to do the inner work. Yes? So this is a gift. It's a blessing. Yes? Then the... the the feeling trapped and impatient, this is just pain rises in the surface. You can give it love. Even though deep inside you hate it, just bluff the mind, say, oh, I give love to these uncomfortable feelings. I, I give love say, this, um, this uh, 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 sensation. I feel this sensation with the vibration of love. This is love heals pain. Love heals emotional pain. Love is a higher vibration. Pain is a lower vibration, which is fear. So when you bring love by drawing it, by thinking about it, I, I welcome, I feel my body with the vibration of love. I feel the emotion with the vibration of love. I feel the, the feeling, the bad feeling with the vibration of love. If you can focus on it repetitively for 15 minutes, you're going to transform the vibration. That's one, one way. Again, how to approach the feeling. Another way is that you can tell yourself it out loud. Yeah? And you can feel it when you say it. You can put your, your hands on the checks and say, I feel the body with the vibration of love. I feel the body with the vibration of love. I feel the body with the vibration of love. And after your repetition, if you stay with that for 10 or 15 minutes, and you can time it on a clock so you can actually see that it works, how long for the lower vibration is being transmuted, transformed. What happens, you would start being silent with the vibration. So I hope it helps. What, what I see here is that if you are frequently on a lower vibration, negative feelings, that's what we talk, that means automatically you resist it and when you automatically resist it you actually sustain this to be longer and longer and longer this is why it brings me why should i work and approach thoughts and emotions in a skillful way because few reasons if i would approach thoughts and emotions with curiosity with excitement with them and seeing it as a gift i allow it to clear out of my field faster if i don't that means i am that's the result that i that i get and it enables me to be in a better relationship better communication with my inner world if i don't I would sustain the negativity longer because automatically I will react to it, resist it, fight it, which will lead me to feeling a failure, hopeless, which will make my relationship with my inner world, thoughts and emotion, poor. This is why I encourage you. I, in, I like to inspire you to really take it into heart and put it into use. Start being interested in the emotions, how they feel inside the body. So when next time you're frustrated, notice, mm, I'm frustrated. Okay, how does it feel? Even if you start describing how it feels, it feels uncomfortable. I feel the heart pouncing. 
I feel uh, my face getting red. I feel my chest is tight. I feel more contracted. If you tell yourself this, this mental action, which is the most powerful action when it is done in the present moment, neutralize the resistance, which allows the trapped energy in the body, which is the emotion, to free itself. Okay? Um, Dolores. Hi, Dolores. Thank you for coming and showing up. Uh, the question is, the thoughts of being black in America, I should not want race relations to be different in America. The thoughts of being black in America. It's interesting, it's, I have to play, approach it. So first of all, the question that came to me instantaneously, are you really black? And what does I mean with this question? Are you a only a physical body? Or are you a light a being? Light being means even the thoughts and the ideas are illuminated by the source of light. And then I ask, what takes more presence in your life? The physical or your thoughts in your mind? So are your thoughts have any color? And that which knows the thoughts does it have any color? Now, so that's one approach that I ask, okay, I think I'm whatever I was born in, whatever it is I would title it. Is this would be only, that's really, is, is that an idea I'm having or it's the body? That's who, who, who is it? Is, the color that people perceive is only me or it's, on, it's a small part of me. Now, let's say I'm black, Jewish, Arab, uh, French, German, American, Indian, in, uh, no, uh, yeah, Indian, Thai, Mexican, it doesn't matter. I chose the physical body to actually be free from all the stories that I have. We are here to undo all the stories that torment us in our life. So the idea, the thoughts of being black in America, it's your thoughts that unconsciously, from very little, you borrowed and you were exposed to the ignorance of the culture we live in because the mind is dividing. So it's dividing and comparing. So the mind is racist by, I like this kind of thoughts and I don't like this kind of thoughts. I like this set of beliefs and I don't like this set of beliefs. This is racism internally and then it is projected out externally, collectively agreed because we exchange the ideas and as a, a little child, I absorb everything, whatever they tell me, I believe it to be true. So you want to find what excites you when you have thoughts that you don't like about 
being black or being Jewish or being a Arab or being any and see that are these thoughts first of all how they make you feel if you keep thinking then you check how they make you feel if they make you feel bad just choose choose consciously to let go of these kind of thoughts and choose thoughts that make you feel better or ask yourself from where am I looking at these thoughts who is aware of these thoughts who am I without these thoughts and don't give an answer to yourself just inquire and I'll explore more in the next I'm not sure if it's gonna be next week or the following week we're gonna start awakening inquiry into the self and awakening discrimination and awakening the concentration and awakening and understanding how to work with the thought skillfully when it's possible any practice is limited sorry limited maybe 95 percent 98 percent there are circumstances or there are situations that i cannot practice any practice i'm telling from experience and it would be or already is your experience then all that one has all that remains is being aware awareness can never be lost you being aware with all the storm that arises within you willingly lovingly happily being with that feeling it embracing it until it passes through that's why the different practices and different traditions they say when you have a, a bad feeling just remind yourself this is also going to change. And when you have a good feeling and you want more of it, that means you're reacting to it. You just remind yourself, this is also going to change. And you remain still. And I'm talking about inner stillness. You might recognize it within me because it's inside you. So when I ask this, the, when I ask a question, from where am I looking at these thoughts? There is a window of silence, stillness. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be like that when you ask the question. Yet, Cultivate the attitude that I don't mind what happens. I don't care what appears within me. I would find what I love about it. I would find what excites me about it. I would find where is the gift about it. So I would transform my attitude towards it. I hope I was helpful. Thank you. We can explore it and take it deeper. And um, Jude. Hi, Jude. Thank you so much for coming and showing up. I'm really happy. Um, it's really exciting because Jude um, is uh, <clears throat> one of the people the people that do his best to nudge me and say okay can we talk can we talk can we talk can we talk and i give him a practice and he's like put it into use and then he comes back it's like can we talk can we talk i'm talking long distance because where when i'm physically and there are people around the coming there's a, a lot of people that, or some, that do that as well. So I'd like to activate a group 
a powerful group that is continuously working within each one with themselves, meeting whatever arises within themselves and um, collaborating together to go deep and uh, nudge me. It's like, ask me question, where are your obstacles? What are not clear? Maybe I'll videotape it and we'll upload it. Maybe we'll um, talk about it. I'll make a note and uh, address it the next uh, webinar we have. And um, that way we will all of us go deeper. Your questions inspire me because it enables me to look within and see it instant for the first time instantaneously because I'm no different than you. So frustration or impatience mostly happens when I'm at work involved with people. That's awesome. That's great. That, mean, that means your work is where you have to do your work. That means a lot of the time in the spiritual community, it's like, hmm, I'm re and, and by the way, I was just like that. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I was just like that. When there are certain things, when I was going in the inner journey and I became serious in the inner journey within me actually 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, before I was interested, yet I wasn't exposed really to the knowledge that gave me tools to transform my life because I was filled with fears and I was emotional just like the girls. And you know what? I didn't know how to cope with emotions at all and neither with the fear until I was exposed to the tools, to an inner understanding, to an inner seeing that really transformed my perception, my understanding, my approach, my attitude. Yes? So, the way I was guilty is that when things are like, oh, this I'm reactive, so I was like, no, I'm going to move away, so I'm going to do my work more skillfully. Yet, all that I did, I was reacting, so I was moving away from the discomfort, and instead of finding what excites me about it, in the midst of it, can I be with that? without wavering, without moving? Can I just feel it fully? And then find what is it that I love about it? I love that I can watch it. I love I, that I can be aware of it. I love that I, it doesn't run. If I move, it controls me. I have the choice now how to approach it with my thoughts with my uh, attitude, or just being, with the beingness of who I am. So, frustration or impatience mostly happens when I'm at work, involved with people. That's great. Anyone who is serious in this work is always interested to find what triggers them, and instead of explode and be... Um, uh, enslaved by it or being uh, is to actually just um, just being with that I can tell you I'm learning a new ways to communicate so I can be more clear, so you can bring it more down to earth. So we looked at how to structure the webinar and I'm talking to a screen basically. And uh, although you're there, yet I don't see you and I don't uh, hear you. So it, I was meeting places that were not comfortable for me, yet it inspired me. 
I, I saw it as an opportunity. I loved it because I moved from my comfort, um, from it moved me from the uh, comfort zone. And anytime you move from the comfort zone to step out, look at it from a different angle, you grow. Your mind expands. You see where your, your um, hidden beliefs are still there and they come into the surface to release themselves and free themselves. So it's an opportunity. Can all the steps you mentioned be done while actually acting and talking with people? If you can, not, if you can listen to the words, if you can notice, be aware of what you feel, yes, from awareness, there's no limitation. Awareness is aware of thoughts, words, and circumstances. Awareness is aware of thoughts and emotions, sensation, simultaneously. So there's no limitation and there's no time you're not aware. The thing is that the wise is aware of being aware. That's, a, that's a just, a, I, I'm not done completely with your question. Everyone is aware, but only the wise are aware of being aware. So you can check yourself, anybody that is present now, during the day, you can ask yourself, am I aware of being aware? And if there's recognition, just spontaneously continue on. And recognition is Ordinary, because it is you, it's your nature. It's already here. So can all steps you mentioned be done while actually acting and talking with people? There is, the truth is there are no steps. How far from Awareness are you from the point of view of a thought? Is that thought? Because the thought appears within awareness and when it completes itself, it subsides within awareness. And you are that which is awareness. You're aware of the thought, it completes itself, you're aware of the thought, and as it subsides, you're aware that you're aware. And then another thought arises. What happens, the moment there is a stream of thought, which is a movie, and the attention is trapped in the movement, then I'm, I'm, it appears like I'm lost, that awareness is locked into the movement of the dream. So from the dream of the mind, it says, I've lost the awareness. Yet awareness never have a thought that it lost itself. It's only the mind thinks that it lost the awareness. And the absurdity or the paradox is that the mind wants to try to gain awareness, which is impossible because the mind is within awareness and the mind cannot gain awareness. It would be like your body in the room that you're staying would try to gain the space that the body is in the space. Or an object, a furniture, which tries, it will now start to think, Ooh, I want to gain the space in the room that I'm in. It is impossible. Just recognizing that what you're looking for is where you're looking from is a, is a powerful shifting in attention. Or 
You are what you are looking for. Think about that. That's a shift of attention too. If you dwell on it, if you reflect upon it. I never seem to be able to do that until I get home at night and have time to think about it. Can identification with thoughts be permanently stopped? The dream seems to continue. So what came to me as I was reading it? So can I identification with the thoughts be permanently stopped? So the question that arose within me, who cares? Who is the one who cares about the thoughts? So that's the spiritual mind goes in and says, ah, okay. I want to, I, this object I don't like, I'm affected by the object, which is not true and accurate and says, okay, I'll move from this object because I like that object. And now I realize I start doing spiritual work, which means working with the subtle. And I realize the object was not affecting me. It was my thoughts about the object affect me. So I, now I move. I didn't like that object and I like that object. Now when I go inward, the same mechanism shifted. I don't like this kind of thoughts. I like this kind of thoughts. Instead of cultivating, find what you like, what you love, what you excited with every thought that appears within you. This is unconditional love. Um, Thoughts are not a problem. Actually, there is no problem unless your mind creates a problem because it is getting attached to its preferences of its likes and dislikes. And even likes and dislikes are not a problem. It's the attachment to them. So if I like something and somebody takes it and I'm not attached to it, I'm free. And if I realize that I'm not affected by the circumstances, means the objects of the world, I'm only affected by the thoughts about the objects, I can choose to think another thought regarding that object. Let's say somebody steals from me something that is dear, really dear for me. And I can say, oh, I'm so poor, it's really affecting me. Which these thoughts, which are low vibration, will affect me emotionally, negative emotion, or I can think, wow, I'm so happy that they, they took this uh, object that was really dear for me. I don't need it anymore. I love it. I can release it. I'm free from, of, I'm free from the fear of losing it. And if I can sincerely think this thought and realize that, yeah, this is true too, then I'm already feeling better. So that can show you that it's, you want to cultivate your attitude towards your thought and you want to always find what makes you happy regarding any thought. There was Krishnamurti, he one of the times he told his students or whatever that he's going to tell them his greatest secret. And everybody were excited and they're like, whoa, what is he going to tell us? When is he going to tell us his main secret of life? And they came for a gathering, satsang. Many people came because they wanted to hear uh, Krishna Murti's secret. And as he said, and he's like, was pulling them. Do you know what is my greatest secret? Do you really want to know what is my greatest secret? And everybody, yes. We are waiting for this. And he quietly tell, told them, I don't mind what happens. Think about it. 
and don't just take it, yeah, yeah, I heard it already, yeah, yeah, I already know it. This is good, except it's not going to take you deep within. When you start to think about, I don't mind what happens, and you start utilize it during your life, your day-to-day -day life. Oh, this is really important. And you feel, wow, this makes me feel really bad. And it's like, if I would have with the attitude, I don't mind what happens. How would I approach it? How would I perceive it? How would I respond to it differently? That's when you start to make an shift inside you that you take it into your real life because something we have to recognize when we experience the sensation in the body when we do experience them the experience is real we cannot deny them so you can either be aware of it embrace it fully this is one practice that I like you. I shared different practices. Go back and listen to this recording. So you can write down if you like a particular question, if you like a particular uh, practice, if you like a particular phrase that you can reflect upon it. You, when you take it into your life, day-to-day -day life, moment-to-moment -moment in your life, and you are shifting your perception towards what is happening, towards your experiences, towards your circumstances, this is when transformation truly happens. Means when your state of mind changes before the circumstances or your bodily sensation changes, that means that you know that you're spirit spiritually advanced, got deeper, however one wants to to look at this, yes? So the dream seems to continue. The dream is not a problem. Just have a, a good dream. At least choose to dream the dream that really inspires you consciously. Direct the thoughts consciously to the dream that inspires you. And the more you are dreaming consciously, you would see that you actually forgot to practice that. <clears throat> it's a different quality than dreaming reactively out of habit, getting lost in, in a dream. When you deliberately dream, you are deliberately creating the circumstances of your life as the creator not as in just an individual story. We can go into it into a different time. Pnina. Hi Pnina, welcome. I'm happy you're here. And um, the question or few days ago, I experienced the possibility of my death. This is great. This is exciting. Death is a wonderful experience. We just imagine that it is a bad experience. If you are actually around somebody who dies, the experience is peace, peace beyond description and beauty beyond what we can comprehend. And death is not a scary thing. Because every night, or if you take a nap during the day and you fall asleep into a dreamless state, this is just like death. So, death is an exciting experience which your mind does not experience anyhow. So, we got confused. Just as an idea, and you, you, you don't have to agree with any ideas. You can explore them and, and see for them for yourself. 
When people are born, when a child is born, he cries, everybody are happy. He experiences a shock of discomfort. The air pushes, it pushes uh, into his lungs, and suddenly the whole stress, everything, he was more protected. Still he senses the hearing, the touch, and the, um, they were functioning. So now when he comes out, it's a shocking experience, actually unpleasant experience. And in the society, everybody is celebrating, except the one who is having the shock because he's screaming or crying. And then, nobody's screaming and dying. Everybody peaceful, just rest. And everybody around are crying. So, somehow we got confused. When there is a wonderful experience, we translate it as bad and we cry. And when there's a shocking experience that is unpleasant, we translate it as an amazing experience and everybody are celebrating. So I'm just pointing out is how our perception has flipped out and is distorted. Explore, exp investigate within yourself, even the, the possibility of death. And I just opened it. I actually haven't read the whole, the whole, um, a, a question um, and then it's, it continues I, I, I was almost choked to death which is interesting experience I had that experience too at the event I was functioning but the day after I re reacted emotionally trying to explore the feelings, the thought and thoughts and sensation that was present when I couldn't breathe. What is the dynamic that happens inside me and how I can use this extraordinary experience to get closer to my true self? That's wonderful. I'm really glad and happy that you see it as an extraordinary experience, as an opportunity, because it truly is. <clears throat> the experience is already gone. You can just rewind back and have the understanding that you had from it. And, 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 and that's it. You might recall if there was, if you reach the stage of the mind uh, realized that there is death, it disappears instantaneously and there is the silence and the body goes under the shock that it goes because the the um, the system start to shut down so um, it happens simultaneously presence of awareness and the reactivity of the body and possibly possibly no thoughts and then um, just go back to your memory uh, recognize what you recognize. If you can learn something about it that inspires you, great. And focus on the presence of who you are or thoughts that are on a higher vibration that uh, um, once you hold on to them, you cannot suffer. Rakshita. Hi, Rakshita. Welcome. I'm happy that uh, you joined our the webinar. Hello, alone. What to do? I want. That's wonderful. I guess there is the I as an egoic person. Okay. And so what? There's no problem with the ego. You just have to see if you can truly find it. And the only time you or I or anybody might experience it is when you are in negativity, reactivity. This is the personality. When you recognize that, you have to find what excites you about it, what you love about it, so you can choose to let go of it or stay present 
with the feelings. Just for an instant, allowing it to free itself. So what to do, I want. I encourage you to focus on what you want only. That leads you to the path of non-duality as a path because non-duality has no path. Non-duality never moves. It never changes. So it's prior to any path. So in the path, <clears throat> we're going to encounter obstacles. That's evidently to all of us. And they are all opportunities for us. So focus on what you want. So when you or feeling that you are, the ego is reacting, find what you want to do with that. You can find, I want to, to let go of this. And just tell yourself, I choose to let go of it and set myself free. I want to just watch it and learn the sensations that are happening in my body so I can recognize that would be my alarm system. I want to just allow it. and ask question around it. So that's the opportunity. Focus on what you want. So there is the I as an egoic person, or there is the I coming from the true self of awareness. The, out, the outcome could be different. Can you comment, please? Play with, I don't mind what happens. If you would be, how would you look at what the egoic from the understanding and the knowing of, I don't mind what happens? Not convincing yourself, not telling yourself, oh, I don't mind what happens, yet deeply you don't like it, you hate it, you want to get rid of it. Okay? So... I'm going to take um, one more question and then I would read some things to all of us. Anya. Hi, Anya. I'm so happy that you joined us. And um, it seems like there is an addiction to the emotions. Seems like I like any sensation that arises, even a negative one. Could you comment on that? Thank you. That's a wonderful observation, first of all. Yet it's not an accurate one. So it seems like there is an addiction to emotions. Yes. And the addiction is a habit. Means I'm used to it. It's familiar to me. And because it's emotional pain, and the ego is, is driving on, it drives, it rides on pain. So what happens, I derive, I'm used to derive my identity from the pain. So what happens, the way I get attached to it is not by liking it, is by hating it, by reacting to it, by not wanting it. It happens automatically. Nobody Nobody likes an emotion that is not natural for them. Yet because it's familiar, I'm a habitually identify with that, derive my identity. Deriving means I take like if there is a orange, the orange juice is the, I, the derivative of the orange itself. So I derive the identity of of my pain to be me. So what happens when there is negative emotions, what I invite you and everyone to explore, if you automatically have negative thoughts, that would be the first indication. And once you recognize you have negative thoughts, that's the resistance or the attachments that sustain it, sustain it, that's the forms of addiction. And the reason 
you don't choose to let go of it is because the one who derives the identity for it imagines that it would not exist anymore if you choose to let go of the pain. If you choose to give love to the pain. If you choose to be present as presence with the bodily sensation unconditionally. So I invite you to explore and next week you can come or you can write and uh, what is your observation. I would love to hear from all of you. Take a, a practice. One thing that you learned from today. One, because I thought I would share only one thing and I was not successful. I shared many different approaches because it's dynamic. It's not a, 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 a technique. It is a principle that each one to find have to find a way in, the way their way in. So choose one practice, practice it, observe what's happening, notice it. You can write your observations, you can mental note your observations. And uh, I'd like to hear from you and uh, what you realized. And if you have more obstacles and challenges, I'd love to hear. I'd like to mention to all of you, when I looked at the questions, I actually looked inside me and all I saw was me. And basically I shared what I saw for myself as an observation. So it might not gonna be exactly your experience. So don't take it personally. I try to open it that everyone would see something inside themselves about themselves. So I only shared my observation from what I've seen because I don't know you. Except that if it is universal, you might have recognized it also inside you. Okay? So I want to make it clear so it won't appear like I'm judging anybody or I am thinking that there is something wrong. It's just I am seeing myself through your beautiful questions and that enables me to be more keen, more uh, alert, and I can take it moment to moment, daily, into, into what I call my life. Okay, so let's read some beautiful things. <clears throat> Once there is surrender to never finding out who one is, who one is becomes obvious. I'll read it again. Once there is surrender to never finding out who one is, who one is becomes obvious. Think about what these words are pointing at. I'll read it one last time. Once there is surrender to never finding out who one is, who one is becomes obvious. The next, to believe that thoughts have power, to believe that thoughts are true is the source of suffering. The only power in thought is the power one assigns to it. True knowledge is not derived from thought. It is derived from the inner wellspring that one is. To believe that thoughts have power, 
to believe that thoughts are true is the source of suffering. The only power in thought is the power one assigns to it. True knowledge is not derived from thought. It is derived from the inner wellspring that one is. The next one, breaking a habit begins by acknowledging the habit. Until this occurs, there can be no change. This is really essential. This touches honesty, being truthful with yourself. Breaking a habit begins by acknowledging the habit. Until this occurs, there can be no change. Once I acknowledge the habit, and what the habits that today we touched is resisting emotion, resistant thoughts I don't like. So if I resist, I can either, to summarize it, remain present with the, with, with the emotion or just present as presence with the thoughts that appear without any movement, means no activating a question, no activating a thought, just silently aware. That's one, one practice. And the other is acknowledging the habit of reacting or resisting to negative emotion and acknowledging, wow, I'm reacting to the unpleasant sensation and now I'm going to find what excites me about it. What is there for me to love about it? Or that I can cho choose how do I choose to relate to it? With curiosity, with understanding, with compassion, with uh, acceptance. Breaking a habit begins by acknowledging the habit. Until this occur occurs, there can be no change. And let's read. <clears throat> Again, there is paradoxes. Take it in, think about them, reflect upon it. There is nothing to change. The mind and the body continue to do what they do. The one who knows the mind and the body is unmoved. The one who knows the mind and the body is unmoved. We started it and Sergey also asked the question and few other people asked the question that gives an answer to the question. There is nothing to change. The mind and the body continue to do what they do. The one who knows the mind and the body is unmoved. That which knows, the ultimate knower, is changeless awareness which is you, here, right now. And one last. That's good because it's related to what we talked today. Pure attention attends. It is the ability to perceive what arises in every moment without reacting to it. Pure att attention attends. Pure attention is who you are. It's pure attention. So when it is watching, means attending, and seeing 
what arises in every moment without reacting, then it allows to the negativity to clear out of your system. If that's not possible, you find in your mind what is it that you love about it. And it can be another angle. Let's say if you're skilled in examining your beliefs, if you're skilled in inquiry into yourself, then you're emotional. You're angry, you're upset, somebody did something you didn't like, which never affected you. It's your belief that affected you. Fine. You still emotionally upset and you hate it, you don't like it. You want to change the other in order to get rid of that sensation, yet that's reactivity which sustains it. So, the moment you can just be with that, without moving, you are allowing to free itself. And if you find what you love about it, wow, I really, really love it because it gives me the opportunity to examine a belief that caused me to feel what I feel. Wow, this is so great. I'm so grateful. This is a blessing. This is such an opportunity for me. As you start this inner dialogue internally, this inner action neutralizes the reaction and the one, the pure attention that is aware of it is not reacting. So it allows this charged energy to be released and set you free. So let's take a moment just being uh, uh, silent. If uh, people wanted to find out which book I read from, -na 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 -na, this one. It's a uh, Wuxin. It's a lovely book. It's called The Lost Writing of Wuxin. Pointers to Non-Duality, five volumes. Yeah. Just, I invite all of us to put the attention within. Recon just recognize the silence. Good. That's enough. Even during the day, if you just start to have glimpses of that which is aware inside you, looking through you as you, not as an individual, just as pure awareness, just as aware. The more you have this recognition of awareness, being aware, you, you would recognize where the essence and true power lies within. And that can face anything because it enables anything to appear and it never affected by anything. So you, in that, in the recognition, you come to realize that you are untouchable, untouchable. Nothing can ever touches you. No, nothing can ever affect you. Your mind can be affected. 
the body can be affected, that which is aware, which is you, can never be affected. Yet, just recognize that the mind and the body are parts inside that awareness. So don't negate them. Embrace them. Make peace with them. Make love with them. I hope I was um, helpful. And again, I invite uh, all of you to be part of these um, webinars to go deep. I would be gratefully appreciating uh, your comments, your um, where are your frustrations. Let's do some deep work. Let's touch the places that um, we don't want to touch. Let's uh, explore um, any direction we want to take it in our life. And um, be peaceful, rest at, rest at peace. And I thank you very much. Thank you.